independent wrestling fans. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Front Row Fanatics. I'm Gargo And Cheech. And here we are. Uh, we haven't done any video in a little bit, so we're going to try and change things up, do little things, uh, different things, whatever, you know. But first off, we'd like to say when we start this show, you know, Bob Liddell, you know, this will be a little bit old news to everybody by the time we get this online, but Bob Liddell passed away. Good guy, good friend, great supporter of independent wrestling along the Gulf Coast. Want to give my condolences and say rest in peace, Bob. Thanks for everything. Yes, sir. And uh, a group of wrestlers gathered together to have a Bob Liddell tribute show, which took place at the American Legion, where Ultimate Wrestling holds their shows. And they've got athletes from various promotions. It was a good, warm, heartfelt show. People had fun, you know, despite the somber atmosphere. Brought a lot of guys together that haven't seen each other in a while or maybe worked with each other in quite a while. So it was a good way for everybody to pay their respects to Bob Liddell and put on a great show from what he's, what we're saying here. Uh, I wasn't actually at the show, but Darvro was able to make it and Calvin was able to make it, Pain Lord. And uh, from what I hear, it was a great, great event, right? I had, I had a really good time. All things considered, when you have these sorts of tribute shows, you know, you never know what's going to happen because you don't know all these people that could be close personal friends of the guy, how their emotions are when they perform doing the show. But the crowd was into it, you know, guys worked, you could tell they gave a little bit extra and all that. And uh, like I said... Good deal. How about match of the night real quick? We'll just go through that, just take a brief moment, then we'll go on with the rest of the show we've got lined up. Well, for me without meaning to be sarcastic or anything, the match of the night was Scarface, Waylon Barley, <laughs> totally destroying poor Chris Knight. My God, I can't believe that guy started walking. I wonder out what Rick Flair thought of that. Woo! <laughs> I wonder what Bob would have thought of that, man, because Scarface just completely annihilated. You know, Bob would have done a shoot comics. A comic strip, yeah. The, no the, the following Monday, he would have done a shoot comics <laughs> in their honor. <laughs> Good yeah. thing. See, a little bit talking here helps you remember things about a fallen friend who's yeah. no longer with us. So, you know, the, we're going to end on this little topic right here. You know, rest in peace, Bob. Thanks for all your contributions to uh, the Gulf Coast indie scene. And now we're going to roll on to uh, another show from another promotion around here. Cheech, what are we going to talk about? Let's now? talk about CSW that we all went to on uh, May 28th at the House of Hardcore. Sweet, sweet. The Iron Trinity. Tournament. 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 Right. Yeah. It was basically a lineup of six man tags. Uh, I don't remember the point system off the top of my head. Right. You'd get, a, say, like five for a knockout, four for a submission, three for a pinfall, one for a count out, two for knockout. Various ways to accumulate scores. So even if you were pinned in the match, your team could still win by other forms of scoring by submission whatsoever, knocking out yeah. or whatever, you know, three guys on a team. And uh, a unique concept, it was the second annual Iron Trinity Tournament at CSW. And uh, we saw a wide variety of uh, people, some I didn't expect to see in Ultimate Wrestling, and uh, or not Ultimate, excuse me, God, I'm gonna get slapped in the head for that. Culture Shock Wrestling, yes, I'm drinking beer again, so what else is new? Yeah, they had everything from spe special guest referees. Right, and, and people from other promotions that we hadn't yep. seen there before. So. Chief, Chief uh, Little Bear, haven't seen him there in quite right. a while. He was there, the SWAT mm -hmm. team was there. Yep. Uh, you know, Buddha Bushido popped up. It, never expected to see him in Mossy Yeah, yeah that was all. a little surprised by me. Of all places, but a unique format, pitting people together and, yeah. you know. Yeah. The uh, Nelsonizer, he was there. He didn't have any DVDs this time, though, did he? No, <laughs> sad to say, but, and you know, that really makes me mad because I know the Nelsonizer would whoop Victor Cruz ass, I know. man. The $1,000 Make Crew Bleed Challenge, challenge. Yeah. still hasn't bled, and it was versus a wall of muscle. Yes, I'm telling you, <laughs> Nelson Iger is thick. He has a good look. Mm -hmm. uh, a newcomer on the uh, on the Gulf Coast here, yeah. Gulf Coast scene here. He's wrestled a little bit, I believe, uh, for Culture Shock, uh, IPW, uh, New, New Heights, Heights yeah. maybe over in Panama City, I think. The AOA too. show we, that they had once a year. Right. Uh, yeah. So, you know, good guy, good look, good physique, you know. Haven't seen him in enough matches yet. Uh, with someone that I think that could bring out the best in, yeah, yeah, you know. Exactly. So I, 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 I'm eagerly looking forward. Uh, Maybe we could see a uh, 
Cameron Frost versus a Nelson Iden coming up soon. Who knows? Or maybe they'd really let him put him in that full Nelson Iden and squish, <laughs> squish Victor Cruz's head like the pimple, festering pimple that it is. And crew, tell your mom to stop sneaking up behind me and smacking me in the head when I'm yelling, make crew, crew bleed. If you don't have enough testicular fortitude, cojones, nuts, whatever, to deal with me, keep your mama out of it. <laughs> Now, the winner of the uh, kind of speed right through it, if you will, if you find something you want to stick in here, but the Crusade actually ended up taking the win of the uh, the tournament, right? No, no I'm sorry, no. I'm sorry. It was, it was the, the elite. elite, not Team Elite, but the, the elite. elite. Yeah, they ended up taking the win. I'm sorry, guys. That's all right. Hey, it's all good, you know. <laughs> various teams were thrown together in this format, some such as uh, the Crusade and the Elite were regular tag team partners. You had some teams like the Onyx getting Tim Haney thrown in with them. Then you mm -hmm. had Initial Shock and some other people teaming up against California yeah. So some were Probably more prepared for it. Yes. Yeah, some got in there. Some were was... more prepared for being a tag team format than others. But all in all, it was an entertaining show. Uh, the Elite getting the victory at the end, becoming the winners of the second annual CSW Iron Trinity Tournament. With the special guest referee was the none other than BTY Colby Godwin, which uh, he did a damn good job of calling it right down the middle. That's, That's what I'm talking good. about. And, and, and to, to add a footnote here, at the end or during this match, Mr. Violence John Riker was injured yeah. and went to the back, leaving basically Michael Desaad and Brian Cage to fend for themselves yeah. against the master of devastation, Cameron Frost, the bulldozer Dorian Brewer, and my close personal friend, thank you for the badass back chop, <laughs> David Prime, you know, to basically stomp those two guys into a mud hole. And it was great watching Brian Cage get beat and beat and his brains beat in, man. That that made my Victor Crew didn't bleed, but Brian Cage <laughs> Brian Cage took an ass beating, so it was great. <clears throat> the finish of that match was kinda cool because Brian Cage went in to break the pen attempt and BTY was counting and then he kicked him right in the face. <laughs> that was a really timed, perfect choreographed finish right there and I think I even missed it on my camcorder but anyway we all saw a lot. That was, yeah. Come on that was just a leg cramp you know from BTY running around that ring with the action all over the house of hardcore man he just had a momentary leg cramp and unfortunately you yeah, know he's got Cage it right had to be the there man you know what can I say. So uh, and then after the match was over the symbol of violence Mr. Violence John Riker was coming out and Brian Cage proceeded to browbeat Riker yeah. about where were you? You like, left us hanging and everything, you know. And he's like, I'm injured because you can see his arm was just hanging like a wimp, uh, limp, wet noodle, you know. <laughs> he couldn't have been able to be much help to him, yeah. in my personal opinion. I've watched Riker wrestle a lot. It takes a lot for takes, him not yeah. to be in that ring. It must have hurt because he can take pain. There's no doubt about that. So with that being said, he's out there pleading his case to Cage and Desaad when out of the back comes uh, Mr. ESP Mike Fresca yeah. there and jumps Riker from behind and then the Crusade commences the beat down on uh, Mr. Violence John Riker. Which they're going to pay for that. No, I hear you. <laughs> Just a matter of time. So Mike Fresca has now joined the Crusade. Right. And I don't actually have a date for the next show coming up, but uh, uh, there will not be a show right. uh, in June for it's CSW. The last, the last weekend in July. Uh, yeah. Last weekend in July, which right now we don't have a calendar in front of us. So, but check out we'll GulfCoastWrestling.com, GulfCoastWrestlingNews.com. Either one will get you to the site, and we'll have it for sure, and we can check it out with you calendars, posters, whatsoever mm -hmm. to promote all the uh, independent wrestling shows on that. Now, we sat here and we watched the show. What was your favorite match of the Iron Trinity Tournament? My favorite match would probably have to be uh, the final one, unfortunately. The, the Crusade versus uh, the Elite, with Elite taking the win and Colby Godwin added even something special to that match, so that would be my match of the night. Cool. Uh, uh, great minds think alike, I guess, because that was my favorite match of the night. and. The cherry on top of the Sunday was watching Brian Cage get the beat down, man, so it doesn't get any better than that. Tang Lord, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to go different. Um, for the entertainment aspect, my match of the night was uh, the Onyx and Tim Haney versus, uh, I'm not sure who it was, they wrestled. Uh, SWAT Team and Chief Little Bear. SWAT Team yeah. and Chief Little Bear. That was my match of the night. It was, it was a very entertaining, a lot of excitement. Um, my second favorite match of the night 
Uh, sadly, it had, uh, didn't have very much crowd participation. It was uh, Fresca versus Cameron Thomas. Uh, it was just kind of ill-placed you know, on the card. Right. It had a lot, all these high spot matches, and then we, we come up with it was this. Like a match. It's cruiserweight. Right. And it, just, it didn't get a lot of um, crowd heat, but it was a damn good match. Mm -hmm. So those are my two matches. Sweet, sweet. Uh, and the only other thing I can say is sooner or later somebody's got to make Victor Crew bleed. Yeah. So, you yeah, know. Yeah. <clears throat> Crusade, look out. I think you made the, uh, man the, the last Saturday in July is uh, July 30th. Saturday, right. Saturday July, July 30th, House of Hardcore, Highway 90 in Mossy Head, Florida. Culture Shop Wrestling, be there. Support the wildest promotion That's in right. the Gulf Coast. See what the House of Hardcore is all about. So with that being said, we're going to take a short break right here. I need a fresh beer. Cheech is going to regather his thoughts, and then we're going to see where the night will take us. Check out a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, here I stand in front of a classic traditional tattoo parlor. This man here has helped me out more times than, than, than anybody else on my show. Uh, Pat here, he owns this tattoo shop here at 567 South Main Street. If you need any kind of tattoos done, come see Big Pat. He does great work. I've seen it myself. He's also got another guy here named Teron who does great work also. Like I said, 567 South Main Street. Come see this man, Big Pat. All right, Gulf Coast Independent Wrestling fans, welcome back to the Front Row Fanatics. I'm Gargoyle. And Cheech. And we're talking about a lot of various wrestling promotions and shows here that we've attended recently. You On know, the Gulf Coast. Absolutely, where we all live. Working and all that other stuff. So uh, right now we're going to talk about uh, Ultimate Wrestling, uh, their last show that took place on what was it the fourth? The the sixth. Sixth Saturday. Sure. Last Saturday was the sixth, right? No man, it's the fourth. Look at your technological device there, man. I'm, I'm right, right there. Last Saturday was the fourth. Oh, bam! You told me the date. <laughs> <laughs> Confusion in the data sharing amongst the front row fanatics here. So anyway, the last <laughs> Ultimate Wrestling show. On the 4th. At the, fourth. the American Legion Post 30, American Legion Hall Post 33. Whatever, 33. Man. That's our first Ultimate show in, in a little bit. Yes. I don't know it, exactly, it, but enough. And uh, I'm glad I went. Me too, <laughs> man. You know, uh, over the course of time, as Front Row Fanatics has been going, there's been people saying, oh, you're biased towards one promotion or another and through certain circumstances. And for a while, we were very uh, content heavy on Ultimate Wrestling. At that time, they had a great, yeah, thing, going, great thing going on, the product going, made you want to be there. Mm -hmm. Over the course of time here recently, things have changed, Ultimate's roster turnover, politics, whatever, all the stuff. I don't know about because I'm only a fan, and I don't care about because I'm only a fan. You know, things have changed. Ultimate went, you know, they're going through some, uh, what's the word I want to see? Uh, re, uh, growth spurts. Growth spurts. Uh, but, but you're not just a fan. You're, you're trying to get it in the back. We, we, this is the rumors we get. <laughs> you're trying to get in the back with those guys. Or at least, it's at least that's all the great said. benefits I get, man. It's all the great benefits I get, like getting the shit chopped out of me in the chest. Or <laughs> well, that's at least what they say. say. Yes, anyway. <laughs> so uh, we haven't been to Ultimate Wrestling in quite a while because, in our personal opinion as fans, and we've always said we'd be honest with them, the quality of Ultimate Wrestling had dropped significantly, mm -hmm. in our opinion. So we started attending some other shows. So we could have some credibility and saying we covered the whole Gulf Coast. Yep. And we're going to go even further. Soon. Real soon. This show, uh, they lowered their prices too. So it's now affordable to go to Ultimate and they got the product that uh, this last show, in my opinion, anyway, they had some good wrestlers there. That was the first thing good was the yes. reduction in the price. Uh, second good thing was there was, uh, I'd say, at least a third of the roster there were people I had never seen before. Yes. You know, the, the guys they had looked like wrestlers, they could work in the ring, even though I wasn't familiar with them. So that was a plus. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like I said, I really had a, a fun time, and I emphasize the word fun time, at this Ultimate Show. Now, was it the highest quality of technical wrestling or anything like that? No. It was a good combination of a lot of different things, veteran wrestlers, young wrestlers, you know, 
to, to give the fans uh, an entertaining show. And I enjoyed it, and I, like you, am glad that I went to check out this last Ultimate Wrestling show. What did you think of Dirtbag Daryl? Dirtbag Daryl <laughs> is the bomb, baby. Dirtbag Daryl is the bomb. I got some of those, these nuts. <laughs> that was great, you know. And, and a lot of people will look at some of the videos from this show and they'll say, God, there wasn't nobody there at Ultimate. Now, granted, it was not a large crowd, but the majority of the crowd was sitting where we were That's right. behind That's the right. camera. That's why when you watch the videos, the, the, the noise is loud because we were all there. So, I mean... Like I said, for an ultimate wrestling show, the crowd was small, but they were very vocal and they had a good time. Yes. You know, so. And if they keep doing what they're doing and, and making it work, we'll put fan, fans will be back in those seats and they'll come and check this out. And uh, we're going to have some really good competition on the Gulf Coast in professional wrestling, independent professional wrestling. Competition uh, is good. Yes. Competition yes. is good. I think the quality is. I don't know. Maybe we can get out of the shiznits. Is that what it is? Yeah, I don't think so. We'll always be the shiznits, baby. But, you know, hopefully we'll get some good competition going back, you know, amongst the independent promotions. And doing it professionally, please, man, you know. This area has a bad reputation, but, you know, you see some rising, some falling. And But as I said, as we were speaking about Time Ultimate, glad that I went, enjoyed myself, plan on going back soon. Not maybe at the immediate next Ultimate shows. We're trying to spread ourselves truly across the Gulf Coast and getting a little bit of each promotion as best we can with work schedules and personal yep. things, you know, some exposure. So, uh, you know, had a great time at Ultimate. Glad I went. Dirtbag Daryl kicked ass, you know, I mean, so. <laughs> what did you think of Soldier and Cameron Barnes that first match that started the evening? Uh, it, that was a good match to get the crowd pumped up, you know, because we sat there and we kept looking at the clock. The show started a little bit late, you know, for various reasons, maybe hoping the crowd would fill up a little more or whatever, you know, we're being honest here. Mm -hmm. And show started, those two guys went out there and, and, and busted ass, uh, put on a good match, entertained the fans. Even though there's a little uh, hanky panky there, what's that I call? Uh, I call shenanigans. That's the word. I call shenanigans on Cameron Barnes and his little partner there, Chris Cameron, Rocket. Cameron Thomas. Cameron Thomas. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm drinking beer. What do you expect? Cameron Thomas. 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 Yes. I'm old. I'm old and drinking and don't have my glasses on. So. He, he had uh, he had his friend come out to ringside with him. And, yeah, Chris and Rocket. It set, it set the match up for later. Uh, as a matter of fact, tag was, match. Uh, what, what was his name? Chris Rocket. Chris Rocket. Yeah, Cameron Thomas. Thomas versus Chris Rocket and Soldier and Scott Phoenix was the other uh, the other contender for that match. And Rocket and Phoenix were two of the new faces that we yeah. had not seen there at Ultimate before that looked the part, dressed the part, acted the part, man. They were impressive. I like it. The, uh, the belt actually changed hands. Whoever, whoever side pinned anybody basically would win the belt no matter who it was as long as it was on each other's side. And uh, I don't remember who won. That was, <clears throat> that was later in the evening that when the first match was, was, was the setup for the the tag match later in the evening. Yeah, absolutely. And anyway, the main thing was we went to Ultimate. We hadn't been there in a while. We had fun. It was good to see some people we haven't seen in a while. We hope Ultimate will continue to evolve and uh, strive to get back where they were as the once dominant promotion on the Gulf Coast, you know. But like you say, times are a changing, the yeah. winds are change, blowing on, whatever. And so uh, that, that's what happened there. Nick Bonders came back. This is true. One of the old well, familiar faces. He uh, had did he had a um, a girl with him, didn't he? Yeah, yes. his manager, I would assume, and I believe her name was Alexia. You can't quote me on that, but I, I believe Alexia. Yeah, that's Alexia. what uh, yeah. uh, Kurt Diamond said on the announcing. And I asked, Ooh, uh, <laughs> Kurt Diamond. Yeah, got to give a shout out to Kurt. Man. And Mays did a return. He was there, and he, uh, that was a uh, three way cruiserweight, yep. triple threat cruiserweight. Uh, Justin Stone, Party Gras. Absolutely. That was a good match, but the, the winner of that one was Justin Stone. Um, <clears throat> that was a pretty cool finish. Is he also not a multiple-time Cruiserweight champion now? Stone? Yes. Yeah, him and Mays are. Yeah, yeah. hey, they're Mays. Mays would have been three-time, right? Yes. Yeah. So now you have been tied by the Party Gras, Justin Stone, and don't you ever take a hideous picture like you did that way. Those medical bills from my therapist. 
They are coming your way in the mail, baby. Can you show can you show them the pose that he took? Oh no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. That's beneath the gargoyle. I don't roll that way, dude. Beneath you, okay. Yeah. No. Alright, let's talk about the finish of the match, that three-way cruiser. Well, you know, they were all wadded up and rumbling, bumbling, stumbling and all that and, and grappling and uh now he's gonna make me think here for a second. Gosh. <laughs> let's say uh let's see. You thought uh Mays thought he had Stone in a submission. Right. Which he did, but Stone was laying over bondage for the referee decision on a three count fall. He thought he won, but he didn't win. And Stone won, or Mays thought he won, right? Yes. And then Stone actually ended up winning the belt. Making him a multiple cruiserweight champion. Glad you figured that one out because <laughs> I was lost. All I remember is Justin Stone won the cruiserweight title. I thought it was a pretty creative finish. Yeah. I liked it. Yes. That was a really good match. It's refreshing. Oh, wow. Refreshing from a lot of things that you've seen, you know, for. It finishes in the end of the scene, so. And a lot of you know, you can check the match out if you missed it. It's on uh, GulfCoastWrestlingNews.com, full video. Check it out. It's all there for you. And uh, which one do you want to talk about next? Any of these shows that we review, you'll be able to see videos on the website. So uh, GulfCoastWrestling.com. Yes. GulfCoastWrestlingNews.com. Either one. All of them, yeah. We also had uh, Ricky Rocket, who I haven't actually seeing him at Ultimate. Yeah, that was my first time seeing him at Ultimate. Used to seeing him over there at APW. Uh, he went against uh, Omega. He's a num number one contender for the uh, UW champ belt that evening versus none other than Death Row. <laughs> I feel sorry for one of those. Uh, what would you think of that match? That match was actually had a crazy beginning with uh, Bobby Doll coming out with Omega and you had uh, uh, Chief Iron Claw. Chief, yeah, Chief Iron Claw. Uh, come out of the crowd to basically be the enforcer for um, the rocket. rocket. Yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, that was a pretty good highlight match of the evening, I thought. The whole round. Sure. You know, it, it starts setting up some storylines where hopefully, you know, that'll build for the title title in the future. But uh, I didn't care to finish that much myself. Uh, I would have liked to see those two guys really grapple. It wasn't a it. clean finish. No, absolutely but not. So. Again, there's a lot of history between Bobby Doll, Ricky Rocket, and Omega from PWA and Ultimate. Between those three, there's a, the tons of history right there. Very true, very true. But, you know, that ended the show on a pretty good, exciting note. So, uh... And the match was uh, Omega and then won by, obviously, disqualification. Right. So, of the interference and... Yeah, that, that was the main event match. Now, we can back up earlier in the show. What did you guys think about uh, Shooter Mike Jacobs versus uh, Dirtbag Daryl? Dirtbag Daryl. That, was, that, was, that match went like 20 or 25 minutes. Yes, uh, surprisingly long because if you look at Dirtbag Daryl, he does not give you the impression of someone who could give you technical chain wrestling for a long period of time, you know. He was waving around those testes on the string, man. You know, <laughs> no, I've never seen either one of these folks, in, or either one of these two wrestlers in action. I've never seen. Uh, well, you've never even seen Dirtbag Daryl. No. And then uh, Mike Shooter. Shooter I James, seen I've him. seen him many, many a time. He's a. Uh, so he's kind of like part time now. Right, getting back in, recuperating from a serious knee injury, kind of working his way back into the scene. The last we actually saw Mike Jacobs. Um, he went out with an injury angle. Was it at the hands of uh, Nick Virtue? Maybe I don't. I don't remember who it was. But he he was wrestling full time, and then he went out with an injury angle. I don't remember who. It was. It seemed like Virtue or or somebody like that. No, no. But you're asking me to think, and I don't. Feel like, <laughs> I don't feel like doing. Anyways, that. he's been there a lot too. A lot of history there. As far as dates go, I don't want to get wrong again, but I believe the next Ultimate Show is going to be on June 18th at the. the Legion Post 33 as well. So in sure Pensacola, Florida. Check out the websites and see what's going to happen there and get the car up and let's check it out. Yeah, they just have the one building now. They don't do Milton anymore. That is correct. They do I'm it on the, the uh, Ultimate Wrestling in Milton, Florida. The first and third Saturdays of every month at the American Legion. Post 33. Okay. What was your favorite match of the evening at the Ultimate Show? Oh, that's it. My mind's all about the dirt bag, man. Uh, it, I, and for me, it was not because it was the most technically done match, but what impressed me about it was it went 20 minutes plus, yeah. and with Shooter Mike Jacobs, who is a technical wrestler, recovering from that serious knee injury against the unorthodox style of Dirtbag Daryl and D's Nuts, man, you yeah, know what I mean? The crowd was into that yeah. match. That was the most, to me, yeah. the crowd was most into that match out of all of them in the show, so. 
Yeah. My personal favorite match of the night was the uh, the, uh, the semi main event tag team match with uh, Cameron Thomas. Yeah, and the Rocket Rocket tag match versus yeah. Soldier and uh, Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah, right. like, that was my favorite. Even. Oh, I like all the high spots. Yeah, I'm an easy mark. <laughs> well, that would have been my second favorite match, but I'm that Dirtbag Daryl match was a lot of fun, man. I, he did, he got the crowd going, and they were into it. It was, it was a lot. Of fun. It's just a shame there were a few more people there to get into that yeah. raucous. But those of us who were there, Dirtbag Daryl had everybody in the palm of oh, his yeah. hand, man. He was working <laughs> the crowd, you know. So he, he kind of reminds me. Uh, uh, great gimmick. It reminds me of the hillbilly pimp McNasty. He could be his cousin. Well, they, that's what they ought to do. <laughs> that's true. Start that hillbilly clip going. Bring man. back, bring back McNasty. I want to see him. Yeah, bring yeah, that jug of shine with you too when you come back, bro. Cause I'm thirsty. <laughs> Get a shot, shot of shine. What do you want to talk about now? You want to talk about where we're going to go? What our, what our plans are? Ooh. No, we, we got. We, we, there's one more match we're going to touch on in that ultimate. Is Scarface versus uh, Big Tim? Haney, Haney, yeah. Big yeah. Tim. Oh, yeah, that was a pretty good technical match. See, now you're changing the rules on me. I didn't think we were coloring every oh, match again. Okay. That was good. That okay, would be my third. Slick underhanded <laughs> trick there. I'll, I'll, I'll buy that. <laughs> y'all, y'all didn't appreciate Big Tim with with T. A. Jones with interference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, T. A. Jones interfered. There was one point in the match where Scarface went for one of his finishing moves, and Tim blocked it. It was over in a corner. And uh, he was getting some good offense there. Well, but, young Mr. Haney is uh, is going through his growing pains here, and uh, he's drastically improving. Like we talked about when we reviewed the CSW show, his attitude there, teaming up with the Onyx in the Iron Trinity tournament. In this particular match against Scarface, he had a little more anger, a little more aggression, a little yeah, more meanness because he's all he looks see. like a little. Hi, I'm Fozzie Bear, and all you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept telling him, come to the dark side, man. He's showing a little bit more of that, so. Yeah. So does it appear that Ultimate is working towards uh, building an angle, a three-way angle with Scarface, T.A., and Big Tim, or, is you, or do you think it's just going to be uh, Scarface and uh, T.A.? I believe it'll just be Scarface and T.A. myself. Because so. if, it, if it's not the three-way, then they're going to have to figure out something to do with Tim, Big Tim. But he can get in anywhere now that he's a bad guy. Just interfere in any match. You never know. He, he might surprise you and come out really creepy and dark, man. So. <laughs> Do it. Okay. He's getting booked. He's getting better. This is true. People can say what they want, you know, and this we often like to do, you know. There's all kind of squawking and all kind of talking, but, you know, bottom line is you see who, who, who do you see on cards all over the Gulf Coast. There's a certain group of them and there's a reason why, so... He's yeah. getting that experience. That's good. That's true. Anytime you can travel and go from promotion to promotion, and some of them he's even been talking, he's been to Alabama a little bit and talking about maybe going to Mississippi. So, hey, the young guys out there trying to, you know, just like I used to rag on Justin Overstreet, too, but he goes to Tennessee, he goes to yeah, Mississippi. He's getting out there. You know, you're getting out there. You're not going to get out there unless you travel. So. Okay, what do y'all want to talk about next? Go to break? Yeah, we need to go to break because I have to pee and get fresh beer. All right, we'll be right back. What? You're not selling very well. Hey, that's not a matter of selling, baby. I know I'm fishing to feel some pride. Hey, Hey, Josh. Oh! This is David Blyman, and you're watching my close personal friend, the Gargoyle and the Front Row Fanatics. Oh! shows in areas near you uh, by the time this gets up so if we don't list your show it's a time thing not a snub <laughs> so we'll start with June 18th WIW Panama City Florida at the Boys and Girls Club 
Uh, I don't know if it's the 3rd Street, the 19th Street, the 21st Street. I don't know. I don't remember, you know. But you can get that information on the website. Poster is there for your looking, uh, viewing, excuse me. We also have UW running on the 18th in, Pen in Pensacola. So at American Legion Post 33. 33, baby, you know. So two shows, you know, 100 or so miles apart. Check them out in the local areas and support them. Uh, the next day and every Sunday at uh, is APW yes. running at the APW Sportatorium there yeah. on West Jackson, Jackson Street. Street thing. <laughs> so uh, APW is every Sunday, you know, good show. Recommend you check it out. Uh, let's see what's next. Oh, yeah, we got like the Gulf Coast WrestleMania coming up on the 25th of June. <laughs> SWA Southern, Southern Wrestling, Wrestling Alliance, Alliance, baby. That's going to be the one right there. That <laughs> is a fantasy run show. That's on Saturday, June 25th, you said, right? Right, at the Crestview National Guard Armory, you can see seven time World Tag Team Champions, <laughs> the Road Dog, and the badass Billy Gunn. They are the New, new Age Outlaws. Y'all did a video on that a couple weeks ago. Yes, yeah. we did, which is also available for your viewing pleasure at GulfCoastWrestling.com. Check it out. Stacked card. You don't want to miss this one. Make sure you're there. WWE recently <laughs> inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Yes, sir. Bullet, Bullet Bob Armstrong, Armstrong, who I've personally taken a chop from, <laughs> baby, and Bullet still got it going on. The, uh, the, uh, the WIW is at the 19th Street Boys Club. 19th Club. Street yeah. Boys Club. Thank you, Calvin. Appreciate your technical expertise in retrieving <laughs> that important information <laughs> for us for the food. And so. Coming up July 2nd is the IPW show, and that is on a Saturday in New Brockton. If you haven't checked that one out, that one's worthwhile checking out as well. And the same day, Ultimate will Ultimate. be running in Pensacola, Pensacola American Legion Post 33 once again. They are running twice a month. So. In Pensacola. No more Milton. No more R put in the South oh, show. Yes, <laughs> the sweat got squeezed out of there. They're done, man. So, uh, And last but certainly not least, on July 9th, in Panama City, Florida. Quick, 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 Calvin, tell me which, which place that is that? might be the same location. It's, it's the same one. It's 19th in, Street? Yes. At the 19th, 19th Street, Street Boys and Girls Club in Panama City, NWA Florida brings Pro Wrestling Fusion to yeah. the 19th Street Boys and Girls Club in Panama City, uh, featuring the Sheik? the Sheik, who is the NWA World Heavyweight Champion battling against somebody I've watched for a long time in BTY Colby yes. Goblin. Yep. I'm stoked for that, man. I'm really stoked for that. He's worked hard for this and he deserves it, so maybe he'll bring the gold back to us. That would be cool, <laughs> man. That would be cool. You'll also have the NWA uh, light heavyweight champion Craig Classic there. You'll also have the NWA tag team champions, the Dark City Fight Club, who uh, Calvin and I got to see in January at the Kiefer Classic there in Tallahassee. You know, a stud tag team, I believe, now I could be wrong, you know, I've been drinking a lot, so, but I believe they are fighting a tag team called the Hate Junkies, oh, which have been a NWA Anarchy or NWA Georgia possibly, you know, they've been tag team champions before, they've been down in Central Florida recently. So that ought to be a great match. North City Fight Club, they used to uh, for Ring of Honor, right? Yes, they have. We've been Ring of Honor uh, World Tag Team Champions also. So uh, This ought to be a good, good card here. You ought to make the trip to Panama City and check this one out. Please. Absolutely. I know uh, at those last two shows we talked about, the Southern Wrestling Alliance and the NWA, one of the two shows I'm most stoked about coming up here in the near future. So... Uh, but it doesn't matter. The main thing is, if you like independent wrestling out there, no matter what your favorite promotion is, and whether we like it or not, support it. We're giving you a forum here to use to express your opinions, show your love for your favorite promotions and your favorite indie wrestlers and stuff. So please, take advantage of it. We welcome you. We are, we are not biased. We may not always agree with your opinions or what you say, but you can feel free to post them here without being censored as long as you keep a small amount of decorum because remember there could be children that can get an account and watch so you know I myself you can have to work on my dropping <laughs> F-bombs and some other things so you know keep those thoughts in mind. Let's, uh, let's mention about uh, SAPW and Loxley. We're trying to find... Uh, last I heard they canceled their show which would be tonight. Yeah. 
by yeah, the time, which will be a week or so by the time this video gets up. But you know, have no heard any uh, specifics on that? Just that they canceled their show. Uh, we need we need the promoters of that show to contact GulfCoastWrestling.com. Yeah, let us know what's going on. Get your posters up. And let's yeah, we're getting you out to us. And hey, Dwayne, man. AWF Mobile, Dwayne. That's right. <laughs> return your email or Calvin's going to get mad at you, man. Come on now. We'll love. <laughs> yes, we'd love to show AWF some love, too. Yeah, so. we need to get AWF to promoted back on Gulf Coast Wrestling again. Absolutely. And CSW is going to be running again in July. They're not going to run in June, but they are going to run in July. We're just not sure of an exact date yet. It's there, yeah, there, there's five Saturdays in July. It's either going to be on the 23rd or 30th. They usually pick the last Saturday of the month, but being that they missed June, they might go with the 23rd. We, they have done in the past. We don't know yet. It's still up in the air. By so, the next show. As soon as we get that information, we'll pass it on to all the hardcore Hellions, the fans of CSW there in the House of Hardcore. Uh, anything else you feel like talking about? Uh, let's talk about the merger of uh, Bob Adele's old site, the um, GulfCoastWrestling.com and the GulfCoastWrestlingNews.com. It is now all GulfCoastWrestling.com, and we're going to do the same thing. Give us some feedback. If anybody wants to email, you can touch base. It's real easy to use. It's not a something that you're not going to be able to narrate through. You can do it. Yeah, now there you go. Hey, <laughs> if I can do it, anybody can do it, man. <laughs> So, you know, the only criteria we have for this is, and you must register, we, we'd like to try and keep the anonymous people from hiding out there talking smack. If you got something to say, you're welcome to say it, but at least have the cojones to register and post your name in there if you got you something know, to say. You know, I mentioned this in a posting, one of the big draws from Bob's message boards was the ease of anatomy, anonymous. Uh, the smart people will figure out that they can still do that. Sure, but still, we'd like to keep that to a minimum. We have no right. problem with you voicing your opinions and stuff, but let's try and use some intelligence and a little bit of decorum. That's all we're asking. Check it out. Okay, so uh, we've covered the merger. We've covered a few shows now. You know, bear this in mind. We're doing a few things different here on Front Row and everything, so we're going to be trying various different looks. You know, different, different formats, different settings, you know, scenery, you know, scenery yeah. the whole nine yards. We're going to be doing live shows from different places and stuff. We might even be on a beach one day in one of them uh, <laughs> like gazebos right there at the beach in Yeah, <laughs> you never know. We could be parasailing and filming from the back of a parachute or something. You we know? might be in Chief Ironclaw's mullet boat over by Fort Morgan. <laughs> Sweet! Mullet fishing with the Chief. You never can tell where we'll pop up or what we'll be doing. We could go to the Christine Barlow's house and film it with the twins. Any, anything's possible. That's right. You never know. So, you know, we have all our information posted on there in Gulf Coast Wrestling News, Front Row Fanatics, Wrestling 911. You know, shout out to our good buddy Snowman down yeah. there in Central Florida. Did y'all see the new poster he made for uh, Fantasy today? No, I have not. Oh, yeah, it's a sweet looking poster. Go check it out. Cool. And visit all those sites. He did sites. the last IPW poster, and that was a good looking poster. Yes, too. and oh, Riker has got it as his profile picture on Facebook now. There you cool. go. So, you know, Snowman working hard. He's a machine, just like Calvin. I don't know how those guys do it. <laughs> when do they sleep? What do you know? I mean,. I couldn't do it myself, but with that being said, support your favorite indie promotion, visit all the sites, give everybody some love, and with that being said, we'll see, see you in the front row. row.